Hello fellow 3000 members of the International Hydrofoil Society and others interested in advanced ship design. I'm Ray Valinga, president of the IHS, coming to you from Southern California. Today we are talking to Tom Lang, who is here in SoCal, actually about 10 miles to the north, but through the magic of video trickery, we will be instantly together when I press this button. Tom will be talking about advanced hydrofoil technology that uh, was actually tested and proven somewhere around 1970. As you will hear, the techniques are still being used widely. However, the ultimate use of a 100 knot ocean going large displacement ship is yet to be realized. Perhaps it is time to revisit the concept and one day soon see a significant advance in trans-oceanic transportation. Let's talk to Dr. Tom Lang. Tom, what do you have for us? Uh, this is a upside down view of a V-shaped hydrofoil with the water coming this way. And how does it function? It functions in, uh, in this case with an air cavity on the upper side and also on the lower side of the two parts of the hydrofoil. And what does that accomplish? It greatly reduces the uh, drag on the hydrofoil, making it much more efficient. Well, it makes it a little more complicated. Uh, is it worth the bother? Uh, yes, if you can get drag reductions up to a factor of uh, two or three or four. And that is a professionally made model. What did you do with that? Uh, it was tested in a water tunnel at Caltech. <clears throat> It's a water tunnel, it was 20 inch, a free surface water tunnel. It was 20 inches wide and uh, 20 feet, uh, 20. Yeah, so well, and then uh, what were the results? <clears throat> uh, the results were that uh, we did get uh, significant drag reductions, but not as much as I had hoped because the air cavity was fine, say in this region, not so good here, and maybe weighted over here. So what, what needed to be done is the hydrofoil needed to be twisted in such a way that the cavity was uniform on the lower side and also on the upper side. And am I correct in remembering that you said a full-size model could be made of that that would be a ship that would cross the ocean in, uh, at a very high speed? Yes, it would, uh, it's designed to go about 100 knots <clears throat> for a distance of uh, anywhere halfway around the world in uh, two or three days. And what are the, besides speed, what are the other advantages? Uh, the other advantages are that uh, in waves up to, say, 15 to 30 feet, this would give a uh, very near level ride. And it's because of the uh, sweep back on the V. And are there fuel savings as well? Uh, yes, the fuel savings would depend on the amount of drag reduction. And the, in theory, the drag can be reduced by anywhere from a factor of uh, two up to maybe three. Do you see that there will be a uh, commercial possibilities with? Will we see this uh, type of arrangement power or be used on a trans-oceanic ship in the future? Well, the, probably the only commercial uh, aspects uh, would be uh, advantages would be uh, due to its uh, speed. So it would have to be. Um, uh, it would have to be used for uh, high-value uh, uh, cargoes. Like passengers, for example. Uh, passengers, for example, yes. And uh, maybe automobiles or anything that uh, requires a uh, faster delivery. What, what about military potential? Uh, very good military potential because it could get troops anywhere in the world in uh, uh, in two to three days. Another thing about hydrofoils with military is they can go through minefields. Is, is that correct? Uh, yes, it is. Well, Tom, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy retirement schedule. Let's get this video on the International Hydrofoil Society YouTube channel and see if we can reinvigorate the 100 knot ocean going large displacement ship concept. Perhaps one day soon, we'll glance across the Pacific, which is just a few miles away and see one of these magnificent ships streaking by on its way to San Diego. Thanks, Tom.